What's up, my guys? And welcome back to the Wrestling Report Card. I'm your host, Cody, and as y'all know on this show, what I do is I take a wrestling show, I break down each match, give it a letter grade, and then at the end, I tally them some bitches up, and I give that show its own report card. So today, we're talking October 26, 2022, episode of AEW Dynamite. Not only do we have full gear on the horizon, we do know that for the title, it will be MJF taking on John Moxley. But first tonight, Moxley has to get past Pinta because he puts his title on the line in the main event. We also hear from MJF and for the first time since the altercation at All Out we get a little video package from the Elite, yes, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. And then to set up another title match moving forward, the Acclaimed Tag Team titles have the number one contender match as you have FTR taking on Swerve in Our Glory. Plus, you got Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, whatever you want to call him, and Chris Jericho both in action in separate matches. So as you can see, we got a lot to talk about. Without further ado, go ahead, buckle up your seatbelts. And let's get to great. Starting us off tonight, you got a couple of Ring of Honor champions in tag team action. As you got Chris Jericho teaming up with Daniel Garcia. And they're taking on the two guys that they each beat for those titles. As they're going up against Claudio and Wheeler Yuta. So we get the match started. And you got Claudio and Wheelsy, which that sounds like the name of the cheesy cop TV show. We're off to a great start. Until Jake Hager in that damn purple bucket hat got involved. Claudio was able to hit the pop-up Euro and then tag in Yuta, who came in, was going absolutely nuts. Happy birthday to you, my guy. After an assisted DDT, Claudio hit the ropes, but Jericho caught him midair with the code breaker. Yuta then flipped over the ropes, taking out Garcia and the rest of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Then, back in the ring, Jericho tried to get his baseball bat Floyd involved, but Claudio figured he can't hit me with it if I just powerbomb his ass, so he did, and then went on to set Jericho up for the Claudio swing when Garcia Garcia ran in and jumped on him. So what did Claudio do? He caught him, hoisted that son bitch up over his shoulders, and then started swinging Y2J around with a grown man on his shoulders. He then went on a wreck shop before hitting Jericho with the neutralizer to get the 1-2-3 over the man who beat him for that Ring of Honor title. After the match, we go backstage and we had a heated segment between Yuta and fellow teammate Brian Danielson, which actually had to be broken up by Claudio and William Regal, so we'll definitely have to keep our eyes on that moving forward. I really enjoyed this. I'm giving it a B plus. I mean, that spot where Claudio went to swing Chris Jericho and had Daniel Garcia on top of his shoulders, that was pretty badass, my guy. We then get our first mention of the Elite on Dynamite since their altercation with CM Punk backstage at All Out. We get a little video package where the words kept trailing off and the trio kept going up in flames, mainly after they got titles. And yeah, that 20 second video already has me ready, my my guy, I can't wait till they come back. We gotta move on though, cause next up, we got FTR versus Swerve in our glory. And like I said, it's a number one contenders match for the Acclaims AEW Tag Team titles. And the champs decided that they wanted a front row seat as they came out and scouted this one from atop the ramp. However, they weren't the only ones in attendance as we had the ass boys who were actually sitting ringside. And did I mention that they just love FTR? One thing to know coming into this match is that there has been some notable issues between Swerve and Keith Lee, which slowed a little bit throughout the match. We came back from the break, and Dax Harwood just opened up a can of whoop-ass all over Swerve and Lee. He tagged in Cash, but at the same time, so did Lee. And at one point, Keith Lee just threw Cash Wheeler to Swerve, who powerbombed him, and Cash is no small guy. And then Dax surprised the whole arena when he superplexed a 400-pound Keith Lee from the ropes. I tell you what. Dax then lifted that son bitch again, feeding him the cash for the big rig. But right when the ref went to count the three, Swerve gave Dax off the cover. Then, with the rest back turned, Swerve shit cash into the ass boys who held him back, and then Swerve snuck up behind Dax and hit him where the sun don't shine. Keith Lee then turned around, lifted Dax up, and hit him with a Death Valley driver to get the one, two, three, and coming up with the series tied at one to one. We will have the acclaim for Swerve in our glory three for the tag team titles. Yeah, I'm giving that an A, and I'm not even mad at the acclaimed or the ass boys for showing up ringside, because they knew what we all knew, which is that these four were going to put on an absolute banger. We then go to the steel ramp, where we have the newly acquired Renee Paquette, and she brings out none other than the number one contender for her husband's title, MJF. 
MJF starts going around mocking John Moxley and talking about their match at Full Gear. He then brought up something that William Regal said last week that upset him. Regal claimed that even though he had his brass nuts on him, he never needed to use them to win, alluded to the fact that MJF needs to use his Dynamite Diamond Ring to win his matches. So, MJF went on to promise that at Full Gear, he will not use the ring. Now at this point, out comes MJF's longtime friend, Stokely Hathaway, but as you can tell, there's definitely been some tension between the two. As Stokely started to talk, MJF smacked that mic out of his hand before threatening him, saying that if his crews lays their hands on her hair or even touches Moxley before their match at full gear, MJF will fire his ass. Because MJF wants Mox at 100% and he doesn't want any excuses when he wins that title from Moxley at full gear. I'm going to slap a B on that, and there's more of this to come, so I'm going to touch on that later. But for now, we got Brian Danielson in action as he's going up against Sammy Guevara. And one thing to know about Brian Danielson is that he is one pissed off son of a bitch. He's mad about losing to Jericho. He's pissed that Danny Garcia double-crossed him. And he's mad that Wheeler Yuta raised his voice at him not only last week, but earlier today. So he vowed to take out all of his frustrations on Sammy Guevara. And he was doing just that, but right before the break, Guevara landed on a beautiful springboard moonsault. And then we come back from the break, and Sammy was hitting Danielson's own kicks on him. But then, after every kick, Danielson would just stare Guevara in the eyes. And I tell you what, the American Dragon just started opening a giant can of whoop ass all over the ring. I'm talking about a BFC, my guy. Sammy got back in it with a Spanish fly. Brian Danielson then tried to go for a top rope suplex, but Sammy just flipped out of it and followed that up with a second Spanish fly, but this time from the top rope. Danielson then came back, he hit the knee, but instead of going for the cover, Brian Danielson made good on his promise as he proceeded to stop a mud hole in Sammy Guevara before he applied the triangle choke, and that made Sammy fade when the ref had no choice, but he had to call the match stopping it, giving the American Dragon the victory tonight over Sammy Guevara. I'm going to give that an A-. I think the commentary team nailed it on the head when they said even though their styles are completely different, these two just mesh so well together. Well, we got to move on because next up, we got a very important match in the women's division as you have one of the number one contenders for the AEW title, Jamie Hayter, taking on the first ever champion, Riho. And Hayter didn't come to the ring alone as Britt Baker and Rebel accompanied her. The two big stories in this match is number one, the power and size advantage of Hayter. And number two, the interferences between both Baker and Rebel as they got involved twice. This match had great storytelling throughout as Hayter kept going for big moves and Riho kept countering with a bunch of very close roll-ups. However, Hayter needed no help when she hit a ripcord Larry, which laid Riho out, giving Hayter the 1-2-3 in a big win. That was good. I'm going to give that a B. One thing to note is that after the match, the champ, Tony Storm, came out, and she actually had her eyes fixed on Jamie Hayter and not Britt Baker for once. And I don't know. Something tells me that that may be something we need to keep our eyes on moving forward. But that's enough talk because it's time for the main event with the AEW title on the line. John Moxley is defending against Pinta El Cero Miedo. And I tell you what, my guy Pinta's chops are second, maybe only to Gunther. By the first break, he had turned Moxley's chest into the same color as the shading on his draws. After the break, business started picking up. First, it's Pinta with the sling blade. He went for his finisher. Mox countered with a cutter. He followed that up with a pile driver. Then, with Moxley on the steel steps, Pinta went for the destroyer. But Mox caught him and sent him crashing headfirst into those steps with a DDT. Back in the ring, Mox hit a King Kong Lariat. But, as Pinta went to hit the ropes, Mox caught him yet again. This time, he hit back-to-back -back paradigm shifts, knowing one wasn't going to be enough. And, he got the one, two, three. After the match, though, Stokely Hathaway comes down, and he sent a message to MJF as he sent the entire firm to do an all-out assault on Moxley. After laying out even the security guards, we go backstage to the Blackpool Combat Club's locker room to see that it has been locked and chained shut to where no one can come out. But then, out came MJF. 
MJF, but then he turned right back around. Next thing you know, here comes Max again. He's running down the ramp. He gets in the ring. He got in Stokely's face, and he kept true to his word when he fired that son of a bitch. But then, MJF didn't realize that he was outnumbered as Ethan Page laid him out before hitting him with the ego's edge. Even after MJF was still trying to fight back, but he was outnumbered 6-1. to one. And then Morrissey lifted MJF's lifeless body up before slamming it right through the table right as we go off air. For that main event, I'm giving that an A-. minus. I thought it was all great. I mean, that match was as violent as expected. But then, everything that happened after, I honestly love this. Because now, either Max is full-on turning babyface, or him and Stokely are going to fool the galaxy and go full here at full gear. And honestly, I'm not mad at either one of those. i tell you what. And then secondly, this made the firm legitimately seem like a force to be reckoned with. And in my opinion, Ethan Page is long overdue for a push in AEW. But hey, maybe that's just my dumb ass. You gotta admit, Uncle Tony's been cooking over there in AEW these last three or four weeks. Plus, with the elite return on the horizon now, you can't help but look forward as to what they got up their sleeves. But as you know, unfortunately, we came to another end of the episode. But we got all the grades in. Now let's take a look at the report card. After tallying everything up, we came out with a final letter grade. Oh! A B plus, that's right, and 89%. Hey, once again, I thank everybody that does tune in. Please subscribe if you haven't already, or hey, go on there and leave a comment about how dumb I am. Trust me, I fell asleep and woken up to my videos like, who is this idiot with the annoying voice on the TV? Oh, wait, that's me. Well, I guess I'm an idiot with an annoying voice. Anyway, hey, this is me signing off. I hope all y'all stay safe out there, and have a nice day.